Well, Reverend Osborne, I'm uh, really grateful that you could join me here for a brief interview. I'm eager for the folks at Furnace Brook to get to know you and by extension, your church a little bit. It is, I think, the Wesleyan church that's nearest to us as the crow flies, even though it's across the border in New York State. So I was wondering if you could just maybe start by telling us a little bit about how Vantage Point is meeting, how things are going at this point in the pandemic. Okay, well, I'd be glad to. Thank you for inviting me to do this. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I've been here at Vantage Point for about a year and a half now, almost a year and a half. And uh, uh, we, we have, I think we started meeting back in July and we've continued to meet, in, you know, from that point on. We haven't had to close the door. So we're, right now we're meeting with about, oh, it, it ranges anywhere from 50 to 80 some people. Uh, we've had a little bit about with uh, COVID within the church, uh, in the children's area, and in the worship team area, and so we didn't we didn't have to close the church, but we did slow down quite a bit. So attendance kind of dropped down to like thirty people or something of that nature. But um, we're meeting regular, or we're doing live stream regular. We've really learned a lot about live stream over the year, and. Um, I'm very grateful for the tech team that we have because I really haven't a clue about it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the morale seems to be well, and uh, I'm looking forward to Easter coming, to, and uh, hopefully we'll have a few more people. And surprisingly, we've had, I would say we've had probably have, have a dozen, dozen brand new people mm -hmm. over the course of, course of COVID. So we're excited about that. Good. Okay. Um, what is a victory that uh, you've had there at Vantage Point that we could be celebrating with you? Okay, well, um, I'm, I'm excited about our small group ministry. Uh, we wanted to start this a year ago, and then COVID hit. And uh, so we, we didn't do small groups. We did Zoom meetings and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, my heart uh, has been uh, desiring to share this emotionally healthy spirituality book with the folks at vantage point and so um i've been i've prayed about this throughout the whole year i've been taking our leadership team our point team in our lac which is our local advisory committee uh, for a developing church and um, we've been going uh, through this book uh, once a month we've spent about two and a half hours and I, I can see, I could see the change develop in, in the leadership uh, by going through this discipleship program. And, um, and now we have launched uh, just last week, uh, actually, actually it was two weeks ago, we launched the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality Study and we have seven groups and there are uh, 50 plus people involved wow. in that group. And I'm just, I'm just thrilled with that. Yeah. Um, most of them are in-person groups, um, but we do have a Sunday night group that has 15 people uh, doing Zoom. And they're all, most of those people in that group are unchurched people. And um, I'm not sure if you know this, but Reverend James Swanson is attending our church. He's been regular with his family and his uh, son or, or daughter and son-in-law. And um, it, he's leading that group there. So he has a lot of contacts outside the church and uh, they're looking for a church. And so that's very encouraging. And uh, I'm hearing a lot of good reports of the meeting so far. Good. good. Um, that, that's exciting. And if we start using that speed, uh, that Pete's Cazero, is that right? Peter Cazero. Yes. Pete Cazero. I, I'm just, I'm going to be guilty of just ripping you off. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> can't can't wait to do it for sure. Um, what is something that we could be praying for the you about vantage point? Uh, what's, what's something we could be praying for you about? Well, um, as you know, being a developing church, one of my tasks in coming here uh, was to uh, bring the church into an established church. And so COVID again, put that to the wayside. And uh, so uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to really focus on that in the fall and uh, begin to talk to people about membership in the Wesleyan church and uh, become an established church by the next conference year or the next uh, conference, not this conference, but the next conference. So it would be a year from 
uh, September, I guess, or if we have it in June that in 2022. Um, so there's that. And uh, also we uh, just made a change in our children's ministry and um, we, we just ran out of volunteers. I'm sure that maybe that's affecting you too. Um, volunteerism today is uh, just everybody's so exhausted, so tired from this last year. Uh, wow. It's hard to get people to step forward and do things. So we're in the process of revamping our children's ministry for, for new, new recruits and training. And uh, we hope to have that up and running uh, soon. Um, and uh, so we, we have started last week and uh, we have something special planned for Palm Sunday and Easter. But, but really, our children's ministry is, is, uh, is the focus right now. Gotcha. So thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, uh, this past year, obviously, incredibly challenging for all of us. Uh, what's a way that God has used it to grow you personally? The, uh, the church or the, or the COVID or everything? Yeah. You well, the, yeah. The just the experience of going through this year. How has God used it in your life to yeah. help you? That's a that's a great question because uh, uh, it's it's really deepened my my walk. Uh, it, you know, it, it, at times you know you you feel like you're floundering. You don't have all the answers. You, you're trying to lead people and not knowing where to lead them. So that's frustrating, right? You know, uh, it's frustrating because you don't know how to plan. You know, you can't plan six months ahead of time or a year ahead of time. And uh, I think that we're beginning to uh, see some cracks in that where we're going to be able to start doing that. But uh, I think that uh, it is it has helped me depend upon God a whole lot more than um, I think I ever have. Um, and especially, you know, coming out of retirement to, to uh, lead this church. Um, and I have to say that, you know, I say that positively because it's been an incredible journey. I've really fallen in love with these people and they're great people. And, um, and you know, Pastor Joel, yourself, you know, you, you want people to succeed, right? You, you, you want your church to succeed. And so that's the heart of a pastor. And uh, we want to see them succeed spiritually. And so they can't succeed spiritually if we're not succeeding spiritually personally. Yeah. And so that has been my heart's cry. And um, so I think that that's, I think that this, this whole stressful time period has been just really been learning how to focus and be quiet before the Lord, helping people to slow down a bit because we're in a fast paced society. And um, for me, that wasn't so so hard though. I, I like slowing down a little bit. <laughs> so um, anyway, that I guess that that's I would say the biggest change for me, and what I've learned is just stay steadfast and steady, and close to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you were saying reminded me. Our colleague uh, Paul Barna at Waterford Plan uh, said to me at one point a couple months ago that during the pandemic he began feeling about six days from now, like he had felt about six months from now before. That like he, he had just as much confidence about what the situation would be six days from now as yes. he used to have about six months. Like it just, it became impossible to really plan ahead. And in that kind of situation, uh, you fall back on God. I mean, it's an old saying, you don't know that God is all you need until he's all you have. And, exactly. And we, this season, he's been all I had. And then I found out that he was all I needed. <laughs> so, yeah. oh man. It's it reminds good. me of an old gospel song, one day at a time, right? <laughs> right. That's all you can do, one day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. And that's always been the case, but there were times in the past when I, I fancied that I could handle months at a time that I could think that far ahead and control sure. it anyway. <laughs> well, brother, uh, the, the church here at Furnace Brook could never know or appreciate all that you've done for us by advising the board, advising me, by being an encouragement to me. And I just, I love you so much. I'm so grateful that I have you as a colleague and that we have Vantage Point as a sister church across the border in Queensbury. And it's our privilege to pray for you. So thank you for spending some time with me this morning. You are so welcome, Pastor Joel, and and dudo, ditto. You know, I uh, 
uh, I appreciate you and uh, love you and your people. And it's, it's been a pleasure to be a part of your um, journey over there in uh, Vermont. So God bless you, brother.